Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching CSS Positioning Lesson 3 and in this video I want to take a look at the normal document flow. Alright then gang, so the normal document flow is the flow of elements on a web page, how they are presented before applying any kind of positioning CSS to them. Alright, so we're going to have a look at that right now by just making some P tags right here. And in fact, I've already got this Gangster Lorem Ipsum uh, website up. It's lorizzle.nl because this is some dope stuff and it just kind of proves that, you know, I'm down with the boys and that kind of shizzle. So I'm going to paste a few paragraphs of that down here. Uh, we've got three in total. I think that is going to be enough. All right, so we'll save that now. And you can see those are presented right here on the right. So already normal document flow is in action. Right, you can see that they're displaying one on top of the other, and that's how normally elements are stacked on a web page. That's if they are block level elements. Remember, inline elements stack from left to right, block on top of the other. All right, so now we could apply some little styles, no positioning styles by the way, just some color styles and that kind of thing. We give it a padding of uh, 20 uh, pixels, something like that, and then we'll give it a background color of. E, e, e give it a font family of Arial and then we'll say line height of 1.4 M's something like that um, and that'll do you know you get the idea so what we'll do now is just refresh over here and you can see this is all displayed top to bottom and a lot of times guys this is going to be enough you don't need to mess around with all these positional properties like position relative or absolute or float these left or float them right because a lot of the times you're just going to have columns of content going from the top to the bottom and I've done this for a lot of websites where we've got a maybe a, a wrapper in the middle keeping everything within that central column and then just stacking things one on top of the other and very rarely sometimes do I need to use all these positional properties all right so before we get bogged down with them I just want you to take a look at the code that you're doing in your web project and just say to yourself, look, do I need to start using all of these positional properties or can I rely on the normal document flow, which is from top to bottom, all right? So this has been a really quick lesson just to really make you aware of how elements are stacked on a web page, and that's block level elements, by the way, uh, just so you know when you're going forward when you need to use these positional properties. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, guys, and I'm going to see you in the very next video where we're going to start looking at floating elements.